Hello everyone, welcome back to Math with Allison. Today we're working in our integration series, so we're going to be doing systems of revolution and we are going to be using the shell method. So let's go ahead and dive into it. Of course, we're going to work it out first before we're given the formula. So here we have the function sine of x and we're working on the interval 0 to the square root of pi over 2. So what we're doing is we are revolving this entire area all the way around the y-axis. So here, you can kind of see on the outside, it's going to look like a perfect cylinder, but on the inside, it's going to have that little dip into it. When we use the shell method, we aren't slicing anymore. It's literally like, pretend that you took a round cookie cutter and you just, you found exactly one slice of it in that sense. So what we do is like, I took a cookie cutter that cut it like right here, right? And what we would do is we would get something that goes around like this, right? And it'd be a perfect little shell. And so I drew that out already for us. And we're going to talk about how we can find this area. Because when we do this, we obviously have a cylinder going on, but we have just the outside of the cylinder. So what if we cut the cylinder directly in half? Then what we would have is a rectangle. So I took the cylinder and it's like I broke it and then laid it out flat. I can't do it with my hands, but you get the idea. So what we know here is that we have a height. So this right here represents the height, which is the same thing right here. So let's talk about what that means in the function. We are going all the way from the x-axis all the way up to our function, right? And our function is sine of x squared. So that tells us our height is going to be sine of x squared. Now let's go ahead and talk about what the width is going to be. The width is going to be given by the circumference of the circle. So we have width is equal to um, the circumference, which is equal to 2 pi r. So let's go ahead and talk about the radius. The radius of the circle is going to be from this y-axis all the way out to our corresponding point right here, right, where, until we hit the function. And now this length, if I drop it down right here along the x-axis, well, that length is just going to be x, right? We go from 0 all the way to our corresponding x value. And so this means my circumference is going to be 2 pi x. So now using both of these, I can find the area of this rectangle. So it's equal to the width times the height. And so this is going to be 2 pi x times sine of x squared. However, this only gives us one portion of it, right? We want to find every single one. It's like we're stacking all of these cylinders right next to each other. And so that's where the integral comes in. We are taking the integral from 0, and then our other bound is going to be the square root of pi over 2 of each of those areas. So this is adding them all up. And so here we have 2 pi x times sine of x squared. And of course, we're integrating this in terms of dx, and this right here is going to give us our volume. So in order to solve this, we're going to have to use u substitution. So here, usually what I look for is descending powers of x. In this case, we have x squared and x. So let's go ahead and use u substitution. We're going to set u equal to the higher power, and then we're going to solve for dx. OK, so we solved for dx, right? And we also are going to have to change our bounds. So we have our upper bound, x is equal to the square root of pi over 2. And we also have what u is equal to. So u is equal to x squared, so we can fill in our x, pi over 2 squared. And so now our new upper bound is just going to be pi over 2. Our lower bound is 0, and we have that u is going to be equal to 0 squared, which is just 0. So our lower bound doesn't change at all. So let's go ahead and plug these things in. So we have a new lower bound, new upper bound. And now we didn't do anything to that 2 pi x, right? But we did change the inside of u. We set that, the inside of sine, we set that equal to u. And we also found dx. So dx is equal to du divided by 2x. So the purpose of this is so our x values cancel out and our 2 cancels out as well. So here I'm going to bring out that constant multiple of pi. And we have 0 to pi over 2. And now we're just taking the antiderivative of sine of u du. So let's go ahead and do that. We get negative cosine of u, and we're integrating this between 0 and pi over 2. So I'll go ahead and plug in upper minus lower. Okay, so um, cosine of pi over 2 is just equal to 0, and this becomes plus, and this is equal to value 1. So really what we're doing is we're just multiplying pi times 1. And here we get our volume, which is equal to pi. So let's go ahead and talk about the official definition we have here. So let f and g be continuous functions with f being greater than g on the interval a to b. If r is a region bounded by the curves f of x, g of x, and the lines a and b, the volume of the solid regenerated when r is revolved around the y-axis is volume is equal to the integral from a to b of 2 pi x, which remember that this was the circumference, right? And then we multiply by the height. So f of x minus g of x. In our case, if I go back to our problem, 
In our case, our lower bound was equal to zero because we were going all the way to the x-axis. If there was another function here, so a function like this, this is would affect our height, right? So we'd have to do f of x minus g of x. So let's go ahead and see a problem that's very similar to that. Here we have two functions, and of course we're revolving around the y-axis, and we're going to go ahead and graph these out first. So first I'm going to graph out this function, and we're just going to do this by plugging in points. So when I plug in 0, I get a value of 2. When we plug in 1, we get negative 1 plus 4 equals 3, plus 2 equals 5. When I plug in 2, I get negative 4 plus 8, which is positive 4, plus 2 equals 6. And then when I plug in 3, I'm going to go back to 5. And then when I plug in, I can see that this is going to be, you know, symmetric. And so here we get our first function, which looks like this. Let's go ahead and graph our second one. I'm going to go ahead and do it in pink. So here, when I plug in 0, we get a value of 10. So, oh, it's going to be way up there. Okay, we'll skip 0. Let's plug in 1. We get 1 minus 6 is negative 5, plus 10 is equal to 5. So we have our first intersection point. When we plug in 2, we get 2 squared minus 12. So 4 minus 12 is negative 8, plus 10 is 2. When I plug in 3, 9 minus 18 is negative 9, plus 10 is positive 1. And then here, when I plug in 4, I get 16 minus 24 is negative 8, plus 10 is 2. Okay, so here we're going to see we have a parabola going like this. So this really helps us see the intersection, right? We're going to be revolving this area, and we're going to reflect that on the other side. Okay, I tried my best to draw, you know, the same thing on the other side. But let's go ahead and take one of our slices. Remember, it's like a cookie cutter. We're pressing down on it. So here, if I took a slice right here, I would end up revolving this all the way around like this. And so there we can see our cylinder. So let's go ahead and talk about the height of our cylinder. I'll go ahead and redraw it over here. So the height is going to be the area between the upper function and the lower function. So here our height is going to be the upper function, which is negative x squared plus 4x plus 2. And we're going to subtract off the lower function. So x squared minus 6x plus 10. So here we can go ahead and simplify this, right? We get negative x squared plus 4x plus 2 minus x squared plus 6x minus 10. So let's go ahead and combine terms. We get negative 2x squared plus 10x minus 8. And so right there we found our height. Now what we want to do is remember we are taking our circle, we're taking our circle that we have right now and splitting it so that we can find the area of the rectangle. And I know that's going to be determined by the circumference. So remember the circumference is equal to 2 pi r. So let's go ahead and look at the radius of this. The radius is going to be from the y-axis all the way to our function. And if I drop that down to the x-axis, that's just going to be our corresponding x value. We go all the way out to x and then we go up to our height, right? So here we have that the circumference is going to be equal to 2 pi x. So now if we find the height times the circumference, we end up getting 2 pi x times this whole thing, negative 2x squared plus 10x plus 8. So let's go ahead and simplify that. I can pull a 2 out of the height, so that becomes 4 pi, and here we can multiply the x in. So we get negative x cubed plus, and that becomes 5x squared plus 4x. So remember, that was only one of those slices. We want to go ahead and find all of them and add them together, which is why we use the integral. So here we have the volume is equal to the integral, and now we need to find the corresponding bounds, and that's going to be the intersection points. So we start at a value of 1, and we're going all the way until a value of 3. So here we have the integral between 1 and 3 of what we just found right here. So now that we have this set up, we can bring out that constant multiple and take the antiderivative. Now that we found the antiderivative, we can go ahead and plug in upper minus lower. Okay, we're going to do lots of simplification here. So here we get negative 81 divided by 4 plus one of these 3's cancel out, so that's just equal to 3 squared, which is um, 9 times 5, which is 45. And then that becomes 18, and now we're going to subtract off. So that, remember, don't forget to, you know, distribute the minus sign everywhere. So that becomes minus 1 fourth minus 5 divided by 3, and then that becomes minus 2. So let's go ahead and combine some values here. Still lots of algebra. So the power of 4 is we get negative 82 divided by 4 plus 61 and then minus 5 divided by 3. 
we could continue going and simplifying, you know, make, you know, make a common denominator, that'd probably be 12. You know, I don't want to do it right now. So we're going to end it here and say that that's a good solution. If you were in um, our classes here at this university, you'd be totally fine to leave it like that, actually. So let, unless you have a calculator, if you're allowed a calculator, you should simplify that out. Okay, let's go ahead and grab this out. First, we have y is equal to 8. So that's going to be this top line right here. Then y is equal to 2x plus 2. So when I plug in 0, we get 2. And then we're going to extend out like that. And then finally, we have x is equal to 0. And so that's going to be the x axis, or sorry, the y axis, right? So here we can find the area that's being bounded, which is going to be this inside this triangle. And what we're doing is we're revolving around the x axis. So it would end up being like this on the other side, right? So let's go ahead and take our cylinder. So we're going to take like this cross leg right here because this is going to go all the way around to the other one. I hope you guys appreciate my drawing skills. But let's go ahead and um, I'll try to draw it better right here. I tried. Wait, ready? Ready? Never seen a better one. Hmm. Okay, so let's go ahead and talk about this right here is going to be the height, right? And so that's going to be represented by this length. So here we're starting at the y-axis and we're going all the way out to our function. But notice this is going to be in terms of y, right? Because this length right here is x. So here we want to solve for x. When we do that, we get y minus 2 is equal to 2x. Divide everything by 2. y divided by 2 minus 1 is equal to x. So we solve for that x value. So we have height is equal to y divided by 2 minus 1. And then remember, we're making this a rectangle. So we want to find the width of this, which is going to be the circumference. So here the circumference is equal to 2 pi r. So let's go ahead and figure out what the radius is going to be. The radius is going to be from the x-axis all the way up to our corresponding y value, right? And so if I reflected this on the um, y-axis, we would see that this would be a length of y. So here we have the circumference is equal to 2 pi y. So when we revolve around the x-axis, we make everything in terms of y. And let's go ahead and take the integral. So here we're integrating between... We're starting at 2 and we're ending at 8. And let's go ahead and multiply this in. So we have 2 pi y multiplied by y divided by 2 minus 1. So let's go ahead and simplify this. We can bring out the constant multiples of 2 pi. And then we have the integral from 2 to 8. And we can multiply that y in. So we get y squared divided by 2 minus y dy. So now we can go ahead and take the antiderivative. Now that we found the antiderivative, we can go ahead and plug in upper minus lower. And now we get to do lots of algebra. So let's go ahead and simplify this. 8 to the power of 3. 512 divided by 6 minus, and that becomes 64 divided by 2, which is 32. And now we need to distribute that minus sign, so we get 8 divided by 6, and that becomes plus, and one of these 2s cancel out, and just 2. So let's go ahead and combine them, some things. We get 2 pi. 512 minus 8 is going to be 504 divided by 6. And then that becomes minus 30. So let's go ahead and see if that divides. Yeah, it does. Okay, so we get 2 pi times 84 minus 30. That is equal to 2 pi times 54, which is equal to 108 pi. So that right there would be our final solution. That represents the volume, right? This is going to be a bit different because we're revolving not around the x or the y axis. We're revolving around x equals negative 2. So let's go ahead and set this up. We're going to draw the function y squared. That's going to be a nice one to draw. And we are bounded between x equals 1. So that right there is x is equal to 1. We're just going to pretend it is. And also between y equals 0. And so y equals 0, that's just going to be the x-axis, right? So here we can see the region that we're working with, and it's going to be right in here. And what we're doing is that we're revolving this around y, x is equal to negative 2. So let's go out to negative 2, which is going to be right here. And then we're taking our region, and that's going to be like somewhere way over here. So pretend, you know, that that was a super accurate drawing. But let's go ahead and take one of our little cylinders. So if I took this slice right here, our slice would revolve all the way around like this. Beautiful drawing. So let's go ahead and redraw it over here. So here's our cylinder, not drawn to scale, right? And so let's go ahead and talk about the height of our cylinder. So the height is going to start at the x-axis and go all the way up to our function x squared. So our height is going to be x squared. Now our circumference is going to be 2 pi r. So let's talk about the radius. The radius is actually going to start at x equals negative 2. So we're going to travel a length of 2 before we travel a length of x. So this right, this portion is going to be 2, and then this little portion is going to be x. 
And so our entire radius is equal to 2 plus x, right? So here we get our circumference is 2 pi times 2 plus x. So let's go ahead and find our volume. We're taking this, we're starting at 0 and going all the way to 1 because we have a giant hole in the middle, right? So here we have 2 pi times 2 plus x, and then we're multiplying that by our height, which is x squared. So let's go ahead and simplify this. We're going to bring out that constant multiple of 2 pi, 0 to 1, and here we can multiply those two together, so that becomes 2x squared plus x cubed. Here we can take the antiderivative, so that becomes 2x cubed divided by 3 plus x to the power 4 divided by 4, and this is being integrated between 0 and 1. So here, let's go ahead and plug in upper minus lower. Okay, now we can go ahead and simplify. If you want, you can create a common denominator of 12. So we get 8 divided by 12 plus 3 divided by 12. And so that gives us 2 pi times 11 divided by 12. And here we can simplify that 2 and 12. That becomes a 6 in the denominator. And we end up with 11 pi divided by 6. And that right there is our solution. So we found that volume. So that's all I have for us in this video today. If you enjoyed it, I have many more like it, so make sure to check out my playlist or link down below. But please give this video a thumbs up and comment other problems or topics you'd like to see done. Thanks for watching.